Thank you for tuning in back with me, Manny Wilson, on the run. The rundown of week six, man. I enjoyed a lot of games during this week six. I was proved right in certain ways about these Cowboys. So this is the first game I'm getting into. The Cowboys, they spanked the Jaguars 40-7. to It caught me by surprise. But then again, in my last episode of the run, I did predict it. I said if the Cowboys came out and spanked the Jaguars in week six, that everybody would shut the hell up about firing Jason Garrett. And what happened? I didn't see not one person tweet or speak on firing Jason Garrett after they just spanked the, the Jaguars. Because Jaguars got a good defense, and they're a hell of a team, actually. But Cowboys, they came out there and balled, man. They they said they plain and simple just came out there and balled out. Their offense actually looked so much They looked so much better. They didn't look like they were trash. Um, clearly, they brought out the money plays in the playbook. Zeke ate, which always equals the Cowboys win whenever Zeke eats. <laughs> he rushed for 106 yards, and in all honesty, when Zeke has a great game, it does open up opportunity for every other aspect of the offense to flow well. It opened up opportunity for Dak Prescott to run the ball himself. He had a, gr- a couple of great throws. His quarterback rating was a 94, so he played really good. <clears throat> Cowboys, they just playing out towards, towards the Jazz, Jazz, the Jags defense. And, and straight up punched him in the mouth all game. The score was 24-0 to zero at half, man. Um, Cowboys, the ground game was clicking. Passing game was going. It was a great, great game for the Cowboys. Definitely, hopefully that carries on to week seven. You know, that way their season continues to go good. Because that, that's definitely a game to build off of. And usually... I vouch for Blake Bortles, but I don't know. I, I'm not. I don't know what the hell he was doing with the Jaguars' offense. But it was it was definitely bad. They need to pick that up because that was not a nice performance. If, and and they have a defense. The defense ain't show up this week either because the Cowboys is going crazy. But they just got to pick it up because they they're definitely contenders in the AFC. But Jags they got to pick that up. Um, but, however, Cowboys, they did pop the Jags 40-7. to seven. They shut everybody up about firing Jason Garrett. And now they move on to 3-3. Three and three. All right, for the Chiefs and the Patriots, boy, this was a great game. I know the Chiefs played against the GOAT, but, but they need a defense. Uh, some people could say the same thing about, about the Patriots. But the Patriots, they did pull it off 43-40. to 40. Close game came down to the wire. Patrick Mahomes, of course, I love watching this kid every time. I talk about the Chiefs, I always mention that. But both QBs really went off. They threw for over 300. Um, they both threw for over 300. And I was worried at the first half that it was going to be a blow because the score was it was pretty bad in the first half. Chiefs could not get in the end zone to save their lives. Patrick Mahomes struggled a bit. I think that's safe to say. Patriots defense, they came after him and, and brought a lot of pressure. And, and they just couldn't score the ball. All their points came from field goals. They had a Pat, Patriots had a lot of momentum at the end of the first half. Uh, score was twenty four to nine, and they finished the first half with an interception. So it was just looking really, really bad. But one thing, why I always say I love Patrick Mahomes because this kid has no quit in him. He does not fold no matter what. Patriots came after him, and he still was was delivering the ball on the money. Came second half, the second half, he still he still brought his team back from from a deficit. Took the lead in the fourth, but unfortunately things didn't go the way, and I'll explain that in a second. <clears throat> but all his throws on the money was straight. Was yeah, all his throws on the run was straight money. And Patriots, they ground game. They did come alive in the second half, which helped their whole entire offense. But Chiefs stayed in striking distance. Like I said, Chiefs did take the lead in the fourth, and when they took the lead, it's only so much you can do when Tom Brady gets the ball left with with time on the clock. It was three minutes. I don't think any any team feels comfortable with Tom Brady getting the ball back with three minutes left in the fourth, knowing all he has to do is get the ball downfield. So I'm sure you can guess what happened. That's exactly what he did. And he took the ball down there. Brady played the clock excellent, just as, just as he always does. Got his offense down there. They kicked the field goal, and they handed the Chiefs their first L of the season. So Patriots moved to 4-2, and two, and the Chiefs moved to 5-1. and one. The Patriots did win that game 43-40. to All right, man. So now for Philly. Philly and the Giants. The Eagles did win this 34-13. to 
Now, I've heard a few people say that Philly got, got their groove back on, but it's still kind of early because they, they did play against the Giants. They're not the best team in the NFL right now. However, the Eagles' offense was rolling. I'll give them credit. I'm not going to take anything away from them. The offense was going crazy. Carson Wentz threw for 278, had a 72% completion rate, threw for three TDs. He was going crazy. Um, Eagles' offense, they was definitely in a bag, had some great play call in there throwing bombs down the field, exciting to watch. It was, it, it did kind of look as if they were getting their groove back, but it's a, definitely a great game uh, for the Eagles to pull off this win because it's going to build momentum within the organization, within the locker room. That's going to help them come strong next week. But the ground game, it was, it was pretty consistent throughout the game, even though they, they didn't have their, their running back, uh, their star running backs. They're playing with with a few few unheard of guys who, who are making a name for themselves now. But speaking of ground game, Saquon Barkley ran the hell out the ball, boy. I don't know if you watched the game, but if you didn't, you got to go watch some highlights because Saquon Barkley, remember that name. That man can run. He is, that's a hell of an athlete right there. He ran for 130. He's got it all, man. I, I, I hate to see him on a team right now. I, I like him playing with the Giants, but I hate him seeing playing on a team where the team is just constantly losing and losing. I mean, damn. You got uh, the Giants got Odell Beckham and Saquon Barkley. Both of those players can help any other team out tremendously. They're both electric uh, electrifying players and definitely game changers. If you see what Odell does and them small catches that he gets, he at least always breaks one tackle or or shift somebody and gets a few yards after the catch, at least always. So if you put him in a position where he can make the best of his opportunities instead of just getting these little small yards, small yard catches and things like that, let that man work. I feel like he's being restricted just a little bit. <clears throat> but his opportunities are definitely limit, limited. And once the Giants figure that out, I don't know. They'll finally be a threat, but I don't I don't know what their problem is. They got to get that together. But in other words, the Eagles, they did pull this out. The offense was looking nice. Hopefully, they did get into another group. It definitely spice up the competition in the NFC. But in the meantime, Eagles, they grabbed the dub, and they moved on to 3-3. Three and three. Now, my team, the Atlanta Falcons and the Buccaneers, I'm not happy with this. We won. The Falcons did win, but I'm not happy with this. We, we won 34-29. I'm not really too proud of this victory, but I'll take it because a win is a win. Now, I'm ready for the day I can, I can watch the Falcons and not have to worry about stressing, you know, where we can get a lead and not, and not worry about the other team coming back. But I, I'm afraid I will never live to see that day. The good Matt Ryan did show up this Sunday. He threw 354, 75% completion rate. He didn't have any interceptions. He made me proud. The offense looked really solid. Um, Buccaneers, not the best defense, but I'll take it. It's okay. Our defense did force two turnovers. Not quite there yet, but we got to get better. As long as we improve from this point on because, you know, any win is a good win. And we finally clinched the close game at the end, which is very important and why we have so many L's, why we have four L's this season because we couldn't pull a game off in the end. Besides one of them, we got blew out, but that doesn't matter. But the Bucks, they stayed in striking distance just about most of the game. Atlanta finally pulled off a close game. It was actually way too close. Jameis Winston, he drove his team down to the, to the, to the Falcons 20. And when he got to the 20, if it was about 10 more seconds on the clock, I'm afraid the Falcons would have lost. But they actually got they got bailed out. Falcons got bailed out because the Buccaneers had no other option but to play that little toss game and pitch it back. And they couldn't get it done. It was really too close, had me shaking up. But we just really need to improve from this point on. But the Falcons did pull off the dub 34-29, and they moved to a rough 2-4. That's all I got for y'all, man. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at underscore many 30 and y'all have a great day today.